Hi, I'm Martin Swetman, and in this video I'm going to continue my review of the Young Address Impact Debate research. Now, so far, we've covered the published research from the original Firestone et al. paper in 2007 through to the end of 2016 in the last video. So it's 10 years and 13 videos since the original Firestone et al. paper was published, and a lot of research has been published and reviewed. I commented in the last video, part 13, that I thought the impact theory was essentially proven, and that only details of the consequences in terms of megafaunal extinctions and human culture changes remained to be thrashed out, and that really only one group involving Holiday and Surravel has found evidence to contradict the theory. Published in 2016, their so-called blind test, although I have my doubts about the integrity of that work. So I thought in this video it'd be useful to back up those claims and provide a quick and complete summary of the research debate so far before moving on to look at research in 2017. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's look again at the bibliography we're working with. So these are all the peer-reviewed journal papers published since the Firestone paper in 2007. Uh, and as I explained in the first video, I've hidden all the conference proceedings and all the papers by the Mahaney group, which will be reviewed at the end, and they're all supportive of the impact theory anyway. I've also removed a couple of papers by Melot et al., which are generally supportive but don't have an immediate bearing on our story, and some opinion papers published in the Journal of Cosmology. And I've removed all the responses and replies to the papers to make it easier to see the key papers in this particular case. Other than that, though, just about everything else is here. So by now we've learned that the key pieces of diagnostic evidence for this impact are 1. Specific types of impacts feral with unusual chemical composition and surface patterns indicating melting and a cosmic origin at very high temperature. 2. Platinum and other platinum group metals which are rare on Earth but not so rare in meteoroids, so that's comets and asteroids. And especially three nanodiamonds, provided their existence cannot be explained by volcanism or lightning. We expect to see abundant charcoal mixed in with these indicators because of the wildfires that would have been generated. But, but charcoal by itself is not diagnostic because obviously wildfires are common. So let's summarize this research bibliography, focusing on the papers that address these key lines of diagnostic evidence. So here's the Firestone paper, which started the ball rolling. Following that, in 2008, is the paper by uh, Haynes that discusses megafaunal extinctions and the Younger Dryas black mat at nearly 100 sites across the US, and how the black mat seems to act like a stratigraphic extinction marker for many megafaunal species. Then there is this paper by Kennett, which I didn't review because it focused on carbon microparticles, which we are not so interested in, uh, because they're difficult to distinguish from naturally occurring carbon microparticles. Next we have this paper by Buchanan et al., which tried to show that there were no significant changes in human populations in the US around the time of the YD event, uh, but their method was flawed because they used data with massive uncertainties. Then we have these two papers by Kenneth et al. in 2009, which bring nanodiamonds into play for the first time. Uh, and, and these nanodiamonds are found across the North American continent at four sites from Texas to Canada. Then we have a critical paper by Surravel and Holliday uh, et al. that looks for magnetic grains and magnetic spherules at several black mat sites. But because they don't distinguish between the very specific impact generated magnetic particles with pattern surfaces, or high levels of platinum group metals, for instance, um, their work can be ignored. Next, Paquet et al. claimed to not be able to reproduce the platinum group metal abundances like iridium at the base of the black mat found by the Comet Research Group. However, their results are for the whole sediment and not just the magnetic grains in the sediment. And when you take into account the weight fraction of the magnetic grains in the sediment, their results are consistent. So their title and conclusions are wrong. Then in 2010, Dalton, Pinter and Scott 
try to find the nano diamonds found by Kenneth et al at Arlington Canyon and on other Californian Channel Islands, but they failed to find them because they looked at the wrong samples or in the wrong place. Next is the paper by Haynes et al that looked for magnetic grains in the black mat at Murray Springs, but because, again, they didn't distinguish the specific impact type of magnetic particle that we are interested in, we can also ignore that paper. We then have a critical paper by Holliday and Meltzer, once again looking at population changes across uh, at the onset of the Younger Dryas in, in the US. But their claim that there are no changes is not supported by their own data, which clearly does show a change. We then extend, extend the Nano Diamond uh, Younger Dryas boundary field to Greenland uh, in the Kerbatov et al. paper. This is a major result, which even includes isolated nanodiamonds not embedded inside carbon uh, particles. The next paper by Meltzer and Holliday is just an opinion piece based on their earlier joint paper, so we skip that. We then have a crucial paper by Napier. And this shows the Torrid meteor stream is extremely likely to have caused several massive cosmic impact events over the last few tens of thousands of years. So this provides a realistic mechanism for the Younger Dryas impact. So a Younger Dryas impact shouldn't be a surprise. The next paper by Scott and Pinter focuses on carbon particles, which we are not so interested in and did not review. So then in 2011, the paper by Anderson and Goodyear et al. shows there were significant population changes at the onset of the Younger Dryas period in the US. Then we have the infamous Requiem paper, which for the key impact evidence we're interested in is based on the flawed data of Paquet et al for iridium abundances and the flawed data of Dalton et al for nanodiamonds. So their conclusions are not supportable. Next, Tian et al extended the nanodiamond boundary field to Belgium. So that's nanodiamonds at the base of the black mat on three continents now. But they claim this is not diagnostic of an impact because they could have been created by wildfires. But this view isn't supportable either on theoretical or experimental grounds. Israed Alcantara then claim in 2012 the Younger Dryas black mat extends to Mexico, but their age depth model is flawed, so we should ignore their results for now. Next is the paper by Bunch et al. concerning Abu Huraira which claims to find nearly pure silica impact spherules at the, at the burned layer at Abu Huraira, indicating extreme temperatures and therefore a cosmic impact. Fayek et al. also examined mag magnetic grains found at Murray Springs. And here I need to offer a correction to what I said in the earlier video about this paper. Fayek et al. find framboidal microparticles embedded in a glassy silica iron matrix. Because of their co chemical composition and framboidal texture, they argue the microparticles have a cosmic origin, but because they are embedded in a glassy matrix, in other words a melted matrix, with a similar composition, they argue these microparticles have been melted and fused during a cosmic impact. Now the important thing to note that I misunderstood in the earlier video is that the framboidal texture by itself does not indicate they are of impact origin because framboids do occur naturally on Earth. It's their specific chemical composition, which is similar to meteorites, and that they are fused and melted to form a glassy magnetic grain with the framboids included uh, as, as inclusions that indicates they, they have an impact origin. So although they say these particles are abundant at the base of the black mat, uh, don't actually plot these abundances with depth. So we can't be sure of an abundance peak specifically of these types of particle at the Younger Dryas boundary. Moving on, uh, Pigatti et al. find several black mats with raised levels of iridium from different time horizons, including the Younger Dryas black mat and an 8.2 kilia black mat across North and South America, and claim this means the Younger Dryas black mat is unlikely therefore to be caused by a cosmic impact. But this is illogical because the presence of multiple black mats is consistent with the coherent catastrophism scenario put forward by Napier and his colleagues. 
Van Hosel also find nano diamonds in the Belgian black mat, known as the Ursulo horizon, but claim it is not synchronous with the other black mats. But their analysis is flawed, and it's easy to see this nano diamond layer is perfectly consistent with the onset of the Younger Dryas. Finally, in 2012, Le Comte de Tau show that magnetic particles with dendritic surface patterns can be used to characterize the Younger Dryas impact. So these surface patterns suggest rapid cooling or quenching from a molten state. And to be clear, these spherules with dendritic surfaces are distinct from the framboids embedded in a glassy matrix identified by Fayek et al. earlier. They actually plot the abundance of these magnetic spherules, showing a clear peak at the base of the black mat at two locations in North America. Then in 2013, Whitke et al. show there are impact spherules of various kinds, both dendritic and magnetic, both dendritic magnetic and silica rich microspherules at the Younger Dryas black mat at 18 sites on four continents. Again, this is an important paper. Then there is the very important paper by Pete et al. that established a platinum spike in Greenland at the onset of the Younger Dryas period. And as I showed, this platinum peak coincides with the onset of wildfires. So this is a massive boost for the theory, as it shows this 1300 year mini ice age was very likely triggered by an impact, probably somewhere close to Greenland. So now we have all our key lines of evidence. So that is impact spherules, nano diamonds, and platinum group metals like iridium and platinum, all confirmed by independent research groups at the Younger Dryas boundary on multiple continents, all apparently synchronous with this massive platinum spike in Greenland. Into 2014, and Andronikov et al. find platinum group elements at the onset of the Younger Dryas period in a Russian lake bed. Then Bem and et al. show there is only one layer of ancient nano diamonds at Bull Creek at the base of the Younger Dryas black mat. But Van Hosel et al. are critical in another opinion piece. However, their review misunderstands or misrepresents the geochemical data we are interested in. But they do correctly point out that only about seven or eight sites where nano diamonds are found can be dated fairly accurately to the onset of the Younger Dryas period. So is this enough? Meltzer et al. also question the synchronicity of all these impact proxies at all the sites, concluding that the dating of only three sites is well constrained, but their work contains schoolboy errors concerning the inherent uncertainty in the experimental data. And Holliday and Sorabel et al. write another opinion piece, their Cosmic Catastrophe paper, which is also flawed and biased. It misunderstands comet science, uses flawed data and methods for many claims, underplays the strongest evidence, and misrepresents the conclusions of other work. It's a catastrophe in its own right. Next, Gonzalez and Haddad et al. extend the range of the Younger Dryas black mat to Mexico. And then in a significant development, Kinsey et al. extend the nano diamond field to around 15 sites on three continents. Most of which are well dated to the onset of the Younger Dryas period, a significant improvement in the synchronization of this evidence. Then into 2015, and Andronikov et al. look for evidence for platinum group metals at the onset of the Younger Dryas period in a Lithuanian lake bed, but their results are inconclusive. Next, using data from dozens of sites, Kenneth et al. use Bayesian statistical methods to pin down the date of the event to 10,835 BC to within about 50 years. Then Van Hosel et al. look for shot quartz, but as this is not a necessary indicator for the event, we can ignore their work. Finally, Thai et al. show the conclusions of Bunch at Abu Herrera are not secure, since we don't know exactly how pure the purportedly pure silica microparticles they found in the burned layer are. Potentially this means that Abu Herrera might have been destroyed by a natural building fire, 
although it would have to be one of the hottest such fires ever recorded, an unlikely situation for such an early building. And given this burned layer also contains nano diamonds, we can be fairly sure Abu Huraira was actually destroyed by a cosmic impact. Into 2016, and Andronikov and Andronikova show how the base of the black mat contains uh, copious amounts of very fine soot, even in the absence of obvious charcoal, and also that there are raised levels of platinum group metals at several black mat locations in the US and, U and Europe. And finally, in 2016, we have the blind test of Sorovel and Holiday that finds a nano diamond layer above the black mat at Lubbock Lake. And that's everything up to the end of 2016. Overall, then, from this quick summary, it is clear the only evidence to contradict the impact theory, which can't be easily explained away, is the blind test of Holiday et al. This is why I suspect it is flawed. And should be repeated. So that's the state of research up the end of 2016. In the next video we'll take a look at research in 2017. If you enjoyed this then please take a look at my book and my blog.